Well, this is high definition of the unconventional kings and this is low-key the wizard of the unconventional kings and we're on the only touch greatness podcast the only touch greatness podcast for sure the um one thing i wanted to know before we took off uh because i gotta wrap this up here at the top of the hour um okay what's the but was it better being indie or is it better being on a major and do you have dream features that you want to have or from either a producer or who's your dream ones? I'm going to let you do the dream features one. And then the other question was about being indie or major. Yeah. Would, would you rather be <laughs> on an independent label knowing how good strange is, mm-hmm. but like, or would mm-hmm. you rather make, make that deal? So what I what I think is I think everybody's situating this. It sounds like a box dancer to start, but it won't be. But everybody's situation is a little bit different. But what is it that you need at the moment? So in other words, if I got a great product and I just got no way to get it, like I make the best pizza in the world, man, I guarantee you it's the best. How do I get it to enough people? Do I have the resources to do it? Because if I have the resources to do it, I got to be indie. I got to be by myself, try to work out a deal with the indie label that allows me to use some of my own resources, but use their reach. But if I don't got any resources at all and a major label is going to loan me the money, what's the difference in me getting the loan from them or me going to the bank and getting the loan? If the if the if if they're in it and I got a good music industry lawyer and it seems like the people at the label are there to help me get the, advance the product and it's not a crazy deal, it's something that I can fulfill in a certain amount of time because I'm building my business with the label the first three years, and then I plan to go independent after that. I think those situations that if a major label is providing you something like capital or the ability to get something somewhere that you can't, it's like, do I want 100% of a grape or do I want 10% of a watermelon? You know what I mean? Which one is more? I just want whichever one of those helps me to accomplish it. And I realize that it's going to cost me something to do it. If, If me and him had a sandwich shop instead, and we opened it up in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. We got to get the word out some kind of way, right? It used to be we'd have to run a newspaper ad or a television ad or a radio ad or whatever it is. Now we'd have to buy some internet uh, you know, ads or whatever it is. You're going to invest. So am I going to go get a major label to be a partner in that because I don't really have any resources to help me? Or do I have some resources and I can go to an indie label where I can partner with them on helping me get it out and we got a shared, we have a shared interest in the result? Because of that, ultimately, I think that's the best way, because if I can have my chips in and we got a shared interest, the likelihood that we're going to fail based on somebody not trying is really, really small. But if I'm dealing with a with a major label and I got no chips in the game, I'm just me, me, me. I need help getting this out, this out. And then they don't see something right away. Now, all of a sudden, I got a bank loan that I don't even have a chance to pay back. So I think it really it's really, really specific to how deep your resources are. I think that's a perfect answer. Oh, man, thanks. Yeah, like, <laughs> for, 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 no, for real though. It's like it, no, it's, the facts, the facts though. Yeah, because you're gonna take the best hand. It's like if you ever got a buyout of your house you own or something, if you, they ever want to come, they ever come to buy you out at your house, you're gonna take don't, the money you would hope, or you sell it now and get less. So. Yeah, or don't don't you gotta don't you gotta work for a bad boss for three years at a job before you get yeah. a promotion somewhere that matters? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like that. It's like I gotta go yeah. take on this thing that's gonna help me build the. The, build the foundation of my business. Hopefully I capitalize on grabbing a market out there so that when I fulfill this deal with my partner where I got to give him a percentage of my money, when it's time for me to get 100%, it's worth something. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know what that was. Hey, all, all good. Dream dream features. <laughs> dream, dream features. features. Uh, you know, just uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to have the opportunity to work with. Um, I think uh, one of them that I would really love to work with uh, would be uh, October London. I'd like to uh, ooh, see ooh, what I can cook ooh, up with that guy, ooh. you know. And uh, no, yeah, such an amazing, amazing yeah, artist. Y'all know, y'all know who he is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that that's yeah. Death Row's new signee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, just like Marvin Gaye. Amazing. Do you already have a link to that? Because I'm pretty sure that. His man or his manager is on my Facebook somehow because I see nothing but oh, a wow. bunch of posts about him. Right, right. Uh, is so is he is he from? So I saw him post something from St. Louis the other day. Is he from St. Louis? 
He might be. Bobby no, might be. From so St. crazy. From St. Louis. I'm, I'm, I'm getting Sadie's on the phone now. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yo, you'd be amazed. Like I didn't even know SZA was from St. Louis. I was like, "Damn, she was St. Louis." I, was I didn't like, know that either. I wouldn't be. Uh, yeah, didn't know that. It is crazy, See, man. So tell us, tell us what's coming up for you. Yeah. Was, and what do you What do you guys got going on? We got. A, got we have an al- We have an album that's tentatively titled Coronation. Um, that'll be the next thing that comes out. Right now, as it stands, um, it probably has. Let's see if this makes sense to you. It probably has 16 songs with seven bonus tracks for a total of 24 songs. Um, and we told you that I told you earlier the features that it has on it. Um, but the other thing that's coming up for Unconventional Kings is that we also will have a show where we talk about some sports. We're gonna talk about some sports, we're gonna talk about some music, we're gonna talk about current events type stuff. You know what I mean? We're we definitely have such our, our perspectives are so different on a lot of things that I think it'll it'll create some good conversation. Um, so yeah, that unconventional kings motherfucking broadcast is probably coming soon. You know, perfect. <laughs> oh, great. You know, it's it's crazy because this y'all having y'all right now. You know what I'm saying? Is like one of my dream interviews. Just having Billy, you know, chopping it up with somebody that you know is close to him, right? For real, like, what's a one thing that y'all want to say, you know what I'm saying, to everybody, you know what I mean? Because now you got the Jelly Rolls nowadays that's blowing up nowadays. You got so many people who interact with a lot of people. Like, what would you tell these people right now, you know what I'm saying, who's trying to get in the game and they just like, yo, maybe I'm, you know, maybe it ain't out for me, but at the end of the day, I wanna, I wanna do something with it. What would you tell, tell a person oh, like that? Man. Look, dude, like age is, age is just another whole myth about you gotta be young or you got, you know, to make, to make something happen or whatever. Like that, that, that ain't true at all. That's not true at all. And uh, you just gotta stay focused on what it is that you're doing. You know, for me personally, uh, being someone that works with instruments, you know, if, if I'll talk to any producer out there, anybody that work that makes music, composes music, man, is you just keep doing what you're doing because the reality is you got you're gonna be a student until the day that you die. And if you keep that mentality, you know, the way that you, you're just gonna continue to grow. You're gonna continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. And it and it doesn't, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about how old you are, what you look like, or none of that shit, man. It's the quality of the product. If you love what you do, you're gonna take care and make a quality product. It's something that's has your expression in a piece of you that other people can vibe with and make their own connections with. And that's the most important part to me. I'm going to say to people, if a person means you no harm, then mean them no harm either. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. That's what we unconventional kings stand for. People being able to be themselves, even in a shared space, as long as there's love and respect for the shared space, because we're all weirdos. We all go someplace else and do something that we don't tell nobody else about. Whatever your thing is that you do, whatever that is, it's fine. As long as you ain't causing harm to nobody else, you can come to our shows and be yourself. Party with a bunch of people that's like you and not like you. Hear some dope music, but just understand that when we're there, we... We're literally there to entertain you. We're there to make you feel better than you did when you walked in the door. You should walk out on a, on a high and with without regard for anybody that was in the room or how different they are than you. 